Two cabinet ministers who have been under scrutiny over the rental of two state properties have been cleared of any wrongdoing. Investigations, including by the Corrupt Practices Investigation Bureau, found no evidence of corruption or criminal behaviour by Law and Home Affairs Minister Keshan Mugam and Foreign Affairs Minister Vivian Balakrishnan. The Attorney General's Chambers has agreed with CPIB's findings. It's directed no further action be taken as the facts do not disclose any offence. Our questions on the rental of state properties were first raised in early May. They were over the ministers possibly receiving preferential treatment and having access to privileged information about their tenancies. MPs from both the ruling and opposition parties tabled parliamentary questions on the issue. For instance, People's Action Party MP Murali Pillay asked for clarity over the tenancy process. Leader of the opposition, Pritam Singh, asked if there are any rules in place to ensure that cabinet ministers don't take advantage of privileged information. It has now come to light that Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong directed the Corrupt Practices Investigation Bureau to investigate the matter on the 17th of May. Five days later, he instructed senior minister Cho Chi Hien to conduct a separate review. Now this in order to address wider potential process or policy issues which go beyond the scope of CPIB's investigation. As CPIB took the next month to investigate the issue, and reported its findings directly to PM Lee. It found no evidence of corruption or criminal wrongdoing by the two ministers in question. Senior Minister Tio's report was submitted three days later to PM Lee. It concludes that both ministers conducted themselves properly in their respective rentals of state residential property. There was no abuse of power or conflict of interest. The review also found Minister Balakrishnan's managing agent was explicitly told by SLA that there was no policy for VVIPs. All prospects and tenants were to be treated equally. In Minister Shanmugam's case, he informed the then Deputy Secretary of the Ministry of Law that he would recuse himself from any discussion related to the rental of the state-owned bungalow. And that's because Mr. Shanmugam is the law minister and the ministry oversees SLA. Prime Minister Lee accepts the two reports. He has ordered these reports be published and tabled in Parliament as a miscellaneous paper. Parliament next sits on Monday. Investigations also found that the two ministers were not aware of the guide rents before placing their bids for the properties. Or this so-called guide rent refers to the reserve rental based on market rates, as determined by qualified valuers from Singapore Land Authority. The report findings also determined that both ministers offered amounts no less than the prevailing guide rents. Alif Amsha has all the details. At the heart of the issue are these colonial bungalows along Redoubt Road. They are state properties managed by the SLE and can be rented by the public. Number 26 Redoubt Road is rented by Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shanmugam. Through his property agent, Mr. Shanmugam negotiated with SLA to clear the adjacent land before leasing. He did this as he wasn't confident the space could be maintained and kept free of so-called disamenities like snakes and mosquitoes. Mr. Shamugam offered to maintain the land at his own cost but wanted it excluded from his tenancy because of legal reasons. Still, SLA said the space should be included into his property boundary since Mr. Shamugam was maintaining the land. Right now, the minister pays $25,000 per year for its upkeep. The report also found both he and his property agent weren't aware of the SLA guide rent. The agent relied on comparable neighbouring properties to estimate its value independently. Mr Shamugam also told the agent that he shouldn't be paying less than his neighbours. A neighbouring unit was tenanted at $26,000 monthly. Mr Shamugam's final negotiated rent amount was $500 more, which met the minimum rental set by SLA. This rental was kept at $26,500 per month per prevailing market conditions. This across the three terms of three years of tenancy starting from June 2018. But in its review, CPIB discovered that there was, I quote, a lack of precision in SLA's use of the term guide rent. In May, SLA said in a statement that Mr. Shanmugam had bid above it. But this is wrong. The $26,500 rental paid by him was in fact equal to the guide rent. 
The actual guide rent would include the original base guide rent of $24,500 and the $2,000 a month to recover the amortized cost to clear and incorporate the adjacent land. This was only found out when the anti-corruption agency was investigating. SLA has since been informed. The report also confirmed that SLA officers involved had no ill intent with no evidence of abuse or position in the valuation. In the case of No. 31 Redout Road, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan's spouse contacted a managing agent in 2018 and negotiated the rental costs. The agent asked for $19,000 and Mrs. Balakrishnan agreed to bear the costs of repairing and upgrading the toilets. Neither Dr. Balakrishnan nor his wife were aware of the guide rent. The $19,000 agreed amount was also above the prevailing guide rent. The tenancy agreement was for seven years and signed in 2019. It was structured in a 3 plus 2 plus 2 format. After the first three years, Mrs. Balakrishnan asked for an extra year's lease for the second term. The rental for the second term was raised by $1,000 to $20,000 per month, taking into account last year's prevailing market conditions. This was also above the minimum guide rent. The reports found that both ministers paid for their own renovation and maintenance works of their respective rental bungalows at 26 and 31 Redoubt Road. As for work which was done by the Singapore Land Authority, they were carried out in accordance with its general practices. These are to ensure the properties are rented out in reasonably good condition. Lauren Ong with this report. Poor roof conditions, structural issues and wet rot, these are typical of black and white bungalows which have been vacant for an extended period. And before they are handed over, they could look like this. It's SLA's general practice to spruce up properties ahead of handover so tenants can live safely in these houses. Both the Rida Road properties under scrutiny had been vacant for years. The one at 26 Rida Road was vacant for five years before Minister Shamugam appointed a property agent to represent him for its rental in 2018. The bungalow at 31 Rida Road was also vacant for five years when Mrs. Balakrishnan expressed interest. Tens of thousands were spent on 26 Redoubt Road. SLA paid 172000 to clear the adjacent land, which had thick and overgrown vegetation and could affect the safety of the tenants. Minister Shamagam pays 25000 a year to maintain this land, which would otherwise be borne by SLA. Substantial repairs were also needed. SLA paid $515,400 to restore this property. Minister Shamugam paid $61,400 to build a car port and over $400,000 for additional improvement works. The property at 31 Redoubt also needed repair works. SLA paid $570,500 to restore the property. Minister Balakrishnan paid more than $200,000 for additional improvement works. Concerns over improvement works that require government approvals were also addressed. M Parks gave approval to the felling of trees as Redoubt Road was part of the tree conservation area. Both houses in 26 and 31 Redoubt Road were also gazetted in 1991 for conservation. This means permission is required for any works to these conserved buildings. As the installation of a swimming pool to number 26 was external to the building, the Urban Redevelopment Authority says no approval is required for minor works that do not not affect the conserved building. Tenants are responsible for day-to-day -day maintenance of building and facilities and for all land within the tenancy boundaries. Where additional works have to be done, negotiations may be made between the tenant and SLA or the managing agent.